Hey everyone, welcome to Film 5D, the show about everything film with the A7S II. I'm Aaron Hammack and today I'm going to attempt to answer the loaded question, do you need RAID for video editing? So for about the past year or so, I was in a desperate need for a more robust storage solution to my previous configuration, which was the following, a super fast M.2 drive for my operating system and other programs like Premiere. I had a solid state drive for my scratch disks when editing, and then I had a RAID 0 pair of hard disks, which were there to keep larger media files on while I was editing. And all this was backed up by another pair of RAID drives in RAID 1, for redundant storage and long-term storage. The problem with this setup is a few things. One, that's a lot of drives in a single case. Two, storage is limited even with the biggest 10 or even 12 terabyte hard drives available today. And three, data is stored across an array of drives versus one single volume. So things are harder to keep track of and backed up. I was in need of a single solution that was also external, but still fast. This way I could downsize my monstrous extra large tower to a mid-size one, like you could see right here. Naturally, I also wanted one that was fast, not just in terms of RAID options, but also for connecting to my computer. Uh, the best current solution is USB 3.1 and USB-C Gen 2. And of course, there are very limited options when it comes to those. Before I get into the High Point Rocket Store 611 4V and why I ultimately went with it, um, versus some of the other ones, let me first very quickly explain what the different RAID configurations do. RAID 0 takes two drives and stripes the information across both, effectively combining your two 10 terabyte hard drives into a 20 terabyte single drive that is about twice as fast, give or take. Of course, the downside is that there's no redundancy, so if one drive fails, you lose information across all 20 terabytes of hard drives and you can't get it back. Thus, you have RAID 1, which basically takes your same two hard drives, but instead of striping them and making them twice as fast, it mirrors them and makes them actually a little bit slower. But your two 10 terabyte drives become a single 10 terabyte drive, but they're redundant. So if you know one fails, the other one will still be there. Of course, RAID 1 is more expensive since you need twice the amount of drives for the same amount of space. Not to mention that it's definitely very much slower than RAID 0 for write speed since you have to copy the files to not just one, but two hard drives on the same amount of files. So it can take you know twice as long to write stuff to it. Then we have RAID 10, which is essentially just RAID 1 plus RAID 0, in that you have a minimum of four hard drives Let's just say there are you know, four 10 terabyte hard drives, which would be split into two pairs of RAID 1. So you have uh, you know, two hard drives in RAID 1, and then another two hard drives in RAID 1. And then those two pairs would be striped with each other so that you get the benefits of both. So those two RAID 1 pairs would become a RAID 0 pair, but you'd still have all the redundancy that you get with RAID 1. This is great for both, you know, like I said, redundancy and performance. And in fact, this is what I was personally, this is what I personally thought that I wanted, you know, after a couple months of research. But there's, you know, two things wrong with this. One, it costs nearly twice as much as the next solution I'm about to mention, uh, since those four 10 terabyte drives are essentially combining to be one 20 terabyte drive. And two, you once again have to, you, you have the right speed penalty since the hard drives are basically backing themselves up as you go. So whenever you copy a new video file over to the hard drive, it has to, you know, copy it twice, essentially. Uh, it's a sucky thing for video editors since the process of transferring over, you know, a terabyte of video footage from a day's shoot like I do all the time, um, this is something that could take really quite a long time on a RAID 10 uh, array. So this leads me to my actual recommendation and kind of the whole point of this video um, for the RAID config you should go with for video editing, which is RAID 5. RAID 5 is three to four hard drives, usually four minimum, but instead of losing half of your capacity, you only lose about 25%. This is because instead of mirroring or, or redundancy across all the drives, you have what's called parity, where a fraction of each drive is backed up across the other three drives as you can see in this illustration right here. So if one drive fails over time, you can replace it with a brand new drive and your data will not uh, be lost. Uh, you can just repair it and it'll repair itself with the new drive. 
Beyond that though, RAID 5 is also very fast since it also includes some striping across the multiple drives. Um, you do have a redundancy penalty in the overhead, so it's a little bit slower there, so it's not quite as fast is you know raid zero can be but in, in my experience i mean i could show you right here on screen the different speeds and you can see that my raid 5 external with the usb 3. Point, uh 3.1 gen 2 is actually faster than my raid zero was back in the day so that's raid 5 but let me talk real quickly about raid 50 plus <laughs> which is another raid uh, out there you know raid 5 plus zero that's why you get 50 plus it's uh basically you take two raid fives so it's eight hard drives minimum and you get the benefits of striping them. So you stripe them together. Um, so you have some parity there with the RAID 5s, but you stripe them together, uh, making them much faster and oftentimes more resilient because you can have up to, I think, three drives fail in an eight drive array if the right ones fail in order. But normally you have up to two drive fails for most of those uh, without losing any of the data. I actually have two of these at work from MediaSonic, but the downside is that they're only available in USB 3.0, so they are severely bottlenecked and slower to work off of. You'd be surprised, USB 3.0 is a serious bottleneck right now, and even USB 3.1, if you have Gen 1, isn't very good either. You need Gen 2 to get the full you know, speed and so that that's no longer a bottleneck for your external drive enclosure, especially if it's a RAID. After much thought and consideration between these many options, and I didn't even bother mentioning RAID 6, that's an entirely different one, I settled on RAID 5 for a couple of reasons. One, it's very cost efficient when it comes to the combination of speed and storage capacity. Two, it's still, for the most part, safe since you can have up to one drive fail, and as long as you replace it as soon as you can, you shouldn't lose any of your data. And three, it's simply more common in external enclosures than either RAID 10 or 50 plus is, because 50 plus needs eight drives, and RAID 10 just isn't as common. In fact, the High Point Rocket Store I ended up buying is the only RAID 5 enclosure that also supports USB-C and USB 3.1 Gen 2. I will say right now though, that if you're looking at buying this product, I should warn you about three things specifically. Number one, the USB 3.1 is significantly faster than the USB-C as you can see by these screenshots I took right here. Honestly, I'm not sure why this is. Maybe it's because the only Gen 2 you get is with the USB 3.1 and not the C, which I don't really know why that would be the case. And then my second point is that this is a software RAID, not a hardware RAID, which many would say makes it more likely to fail, especially with new operating systems um, and new updates coming out but I've only ever used software raids in the past and I've never had any serious issues. I've always been able to fix them if I have any issues. Finally, the third kind of warning I wanna give you about this product specifically is that it doesn't support RAID 10. It only supports RAID 5 and lower. So it doesn't support RAID 10 or RAID 50 plus like I mentioned um, before. Other than that, this is a great product and this video wasn't really meant to be kind of a review or anything like that. I just wanted to let you know a little, let you in on my experience with the months and years that I've been considering, you know, getting this raid because it was a pretty expensive endeavor. I think my my final cost on everything was around 1,200 bucks, which isn't cheap for a storage solution. I should also mention that I did have to upgrade my Z170 board and CPU simply because they only had USB 3.1 and USB-C Gen 1, which is not only incredibly confusing, especially for consumers. But also Gen 1 is absolute garbage and barely an upgrade over USB 3.0. So basically just make sure that you have the right Gen 2 ports before you go out and buy this specific product or any other Gen 2 enclosures out there. Before we end this video, I figured I'd show you my side-by-side -side comparisons of all the speeds I was personally getting through the different drives. You can see here I have my M.2 drive. That one's super fast. Uh, that's the Samsung 960 Evo. Then I have, you know, SSDs here. This is my scratch disk. Uh, these are still really fast, especially since you can get them for cheaper nowadays. And then you have my RAID 0 that I used to have, and you can see it compared to my RAID 1, um, as well as my current RAID 5, you can see here. And then I also have a JBOD, which just stands for uh, just a bunch of disks. Um, and I have that for more long-term storage and you can see how that compares. So RAID's definitely faster in this case. And then finally we have my RAID 50 Plus from work, um, but that one's only uh, USB 3.0, hence the slower speeds. Now, of course there are people out there who would say that RAID in general, hardware or software RAID is just too unreliable and risky. 
But of course, the performance improvements over the long run are undeniable as well on how much time it's gonna save you and how convenient it's gonna be. What do you think about RAID 5 for video editing? Do you have any other solutions that work better for you? Let me know in the comments below. Also, I'm thinking about doing a more detailed video about my current setup, which is a pretty sweet one, if you could see it back here, um, both for video gamers and video editors like myself. If you'd like to see that video along with my hardware recommendations for editors, let me know below. And if you wanna buy this external raid bay, please do so through my Amazon links in the description below. Buying through my links helps to support the channel so I can make more of these videos and I really do appreciate it. But that's it for this week. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. And if you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments or hit me up on Twitter at Filmin5D. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the logo on screen for updates on my new videos when they become available. If you want to learn more about the hard drive RAID setups, check out my blog on my website at filmin5d.com. Also check out my most recent video by clicking the link on screen. Thanks again for watching.